Hi, everybody. Are you ready for week three of being amazed? <laughs> we are still in First Kings, and we are still talking about Elijah, who was a prophet of God, meaning that he could hear God's voice and could tell people about God back before Jesus and before everybody was connected to God, if they choose to be. So, but this week, we're just keeping on with our story. So the first week, we talked about how um, Elijah was taken care of by God using birds and a little old lady and her son and, and how amazing God did it. He didn't just do it in a regular way. He did it in an amazing way. And then in week two, we talked about how God knows what's best for us and showed that God is the true God and that he wants good things for us. So this week, we're talking about how God speaks to you and me because he's amazing and God speaks to us. <clears throat> okay, so we are in 1 Kings chapter 19 and we're focusing on mainly the first 15 verses, okay? So let's think about what happened last week. So last week, remember God was mad because they were worshiping Baal and so Elijah kind of had a challenge and he said, okay, all you people that follow Baal, you come up here, set up an altar, don't light it, and ask Baal to light the fire. And of course, he didn't because he's not real. And so then he did the same thing, Elijah did the same thing, but covered his sacrifice, his altar, with gallons and buckets of water until everything was soaked. And God, of course, because he's the real God, sent down fire from heaven and dried up and burned up everything. And everybody immediately knew that um, God was the real God and that all of the people that were worshiping Baal were in really big trouble. So, and it started raining, which it hadn't rained in like three years. So, big deal. But then King, King Ahab and Jezebel heard all about what was going on and they were like, we're gonna get rid of Elijah. They're like, he's gone today. Like not even tomorrow, like right now. We're getting rid of him. And Elijah heard this. So he's like, I am leaving. <laughs> I'm out of here. I am, this is not what I signed up for. I'm out. I don't wanna die today. Today is not a good day to die. So he and one of his friends left. He left his friends along the way and then he walked for a day into the desert, a whole day, just walked into the desert for a whole day and sat under a bush, maybe a whole day and night, let me see. Now, he walked for a whole day into the desert and he sat down under a bush and he said, God, I'm done, just take me to heaven, I'm done, just, I'm done with this life, I'm done with everything, just take me, take me, I'm done. I don't wanna deal with this. And he goes to sleep under this big, tree bush thing okay while he is sleeping an angel of the lord appears that doesn't wake him up so the angel has to touch elijah and, he, and the angel says get up and eat and elijah was like what and he looks around and there is a little fire a little coals with a little nice loaf of bread on it and a jar of water and he's like, okay, sure. And he eats. I mean, that's not the that's not the weirdest way he's gotten food. I mean, he had birds, like never ending oil. Yeah. So he's like, okay, sure. So he eats it, drinks his water, and he goes back to sleep again. Well, the angel comes a second time, a second time, and says, get up and eat. If you don't, the journey will be too hard for you. That's verse seven. So I don't know about you, but I'd be like, what journey are you talking about? But he didn't ask any questions and Elijah got up and he ate and he drank the food and that food that the angel gave him 
made him strong enough to walk for 40 days and nights straight through the desert. That's pretty impressive to me. That's pretty amazing. But that's not even the end of the story, okay? So, he walks for 40 days and 40 nights over this angel food, you know, and he walks to Mount Sinai. Now, they call that the mountain of God, okay? And Elijah gets there. He finds a cave. He spends the night in the cave. I don't know what he's thinking at this point. I would just be like, I don't even know. I don't know what it would be like to walk for 40 days a night after an angel gave me some bread and food. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So he wakes up to the voice of God saying, Elijah, why are you here? Okay. This is verse 10. Elijah answers, Lord God of heaven's armies, I have always served you the very best I could. But the people of Israel have broken their agreement with you. They have destroyed your altars. They have killed your prophets with the sword. And I am the only prophet left. And now they're going to try to kill me too. That seems like a good reason to be hiding in a cave. But the Lord says to Elijah, Go stand in front of me on the mountain, and I will come pass by you. Like, just go stand on the mountain. Let's go up the mountain and wait. I'll, I'll be there, okay? I'm going to come see you, okay? So, this is what happens. He climbs up on the mountain. All of a sudden, a very strong wind started to blow. It caused the mountains to break apart. It broke off large rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, oh, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in a fire. But after the fire, there was a quiet, gentle voice. And when Elijah heard it, he covered his face with his coat. I think he was a little embarrassed, maybe. He covered his face with his coat and he went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. Maybe, maybe he covered his his voice with the coat because he knew if he looked at God, like it'd be too much. He'd be like, what? And he really needed to hear what God was saying. I don't know. I think he was possibly a little like frightened and embarrassed and stuff too. And then Elijah heard a voice and said, Elijah, why are you here? And Elijah answered the same thing. Lord God of heaven's armies, I have always served you the best I could. But the people of Israel have broken their agreement with you. And they have destroyed your altars. They have killed your prophets with swords. And I am the only prophet left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Well, the Lord tells him to go back uh, to Damascus. And he gives him lots of things to do. Anoints certain people to be in charge of things. Make sure that... There's people there, and he says, you are not alone. There are 7,000 people still living in Israel who have never bowed down before Baal. Their mouths have never kissed the idol. You are not alone. So, he went back. He got a new friend, Elisha follow him so Elisha's now following Elijah so he, not only does he get to go back and find a community of people that believe in God but he now has a new follower a new prophet that he can teach Elisha so God can speak to us but he doesn't always do it in a big fancy way if you are waiting for God to speak to you like, yell at you like your mom does. Like, pick up your shoes. Like, he's probably not going to do that. He might tell you in a song you hear on the radio that you, maybe you've been thinking about something and, oh, that's what I've been thinking about. Maybe, maybe I should do that. He could speak to you when you read your Bible and you read something and you're like, oh, 
That's exactly what I've been worried about. And here it is in the Bible, just for me. God speaks to us in ways that we are not going to expect. So, God can do huge things like move mountains and burn up sacrifices and make birds feed you and all of these amazing things. But sometimes the most amazing thing is that God loves you so much, so much, that he'll lean in and whisper to you exactly what you need to hear. Now, how do we know it's God's voice? Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 27. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now, why are we talking about sheep? Well, we say that Jesus, that God, he's our great shepherd. He's our sheep. And a shepherd goes and he takes care of his sheep no matter what. If one gets lost, he goes, gets it. If one gets hurt, he helps it. A shepherd makes sure that all of the sheep are healthy and happy and they have what they need, right? And the sheep, you know, they're just sheep. But they have to be able to hear their shepherd and know it's them and trust them. And that's how we have to be with God. But if we can't talk to God like I'm talking to you, then how do I know God's voice? It's in here. We read our Bible. We hear the promises that God has for us. And when we are talking to God and we hear those same promises, things that are, are like what we hear in our Bible, then that's the voice of God. If you truly read your Bible and you start to learn about God and know God, just like you know your best friend or your mom, then you'll know in your heart when it's God talking to you. So think of it this way. How do I know so what's going on? How, how can I hear something differently? All right, so I'm gonna get this balloon. Let me stretch it out. I didn't try to blow it up before, so let's hope it blows up. <laughs> All right, ready? We're gonna blow up this balloon. If you have a balloon at home, you can try this. Um, you can do this with a cup over your ear or, you know, anything like a, like, a, like a ball or anything that has kind of space inside. Okay, so when I do this to a balloon, it sounds not too loud. I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try it. If that sounded different, it's because when you put it up to your ear, it sounds louder, it sounds different, because the air inside of your balloon is squished together. The air out here in the room is all moving around, but the air in the balloon is squished together. So when you put your ear up here, it sounds different. Even if you just talk to your balloon, it sounds different, right? because the air is closer together and you can hear what's happening better. So, just like our balloon, when we get closer to God and we squish in and we dig deep and we start to hear God's voice, we'll be able to hear his voice more clearly. It will become louder in our hearts and in our lives because the more you know somebody, the faster you can pick out their voice. The, the more that you see somebody's face, you can find them in a crowd faster, right? My dad, he used to whistle for us. I can't whistle like my dad did, but he would whistle to say like, hey, come on. And I could be in a crowd of people, but I knew that sound and I would turn and go because I knew the sound of my dad's voice. I knew the sound of my dad's whistle. And that's how close we were supposed to be with God our Father. That when he talks to us, we go, oh, it's time to go. It's time to do what we're supposed to be doing. It's time to listen because God is so amazing and he loves us so much. That if we want the good stuff that he has for us, all we have to do is cl get close to him and listen to him. Follow him.
right? Because he's our good shepherd and he's going to make sure that good stuff happened to us. All right, before we got to go, we got to do our Bible verse. So it is, Lord your God, who is present with you, is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God, who is present with you, is a great and awesome God. And that is from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 21. So let's try to do the sign language, right? So the Lord, make your L, make your sash, so that goes from shoulder to hip. The Lord, your God, who is present with you, is a great and awesome God. The Lord, your God, who is present with you, is a great and awesome God. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 21. All right, I hope you guys are practicing that because I think when you learn something else to go with a Bible verse, it helps you remember it in your brain more. Because not you're, now you're not just saying the words with your mouth, you're saying the words with your hands too. And if you ever meet anybody who's deaf, then you know some sign language. I mean, they might be wondering why you're quitting Bible verses at them instead of just saying like, hi, I'm what my name is and all that, but that's something for another day. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us, for listening to us, for hearing what we have to say and talking to us in that still small voice so that we know that you're always with us and you love us so much. You love us so much that you spend time with just us when we need it. You come and whisper to our hearts and to our lives when we need it. God, help us to follow you. Help us to get close to you so that we hear your voice no matter where we are and that we can do the good things that you want us to do. God, thank you for being bigger than all of our problems, bigger than all of our fears, bigger than everything in this world. And help us to remember to just focus on you, get closer to you, so that your voice and your love can be the loudest things in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, I will see you again on Sunday. Don't forget, remember, don't forget, but remember, there is a trunk or treat next Wednesday the 28th, and it's from 6.30 to 7.30, just the same that we would have class in the evening. Please, please, please invite your friends. We have a link on our Facebook page for you to RSVP, Respondez-vous, s'il vous plaît, which means please respond to us so that we can prepare and have enough treats and things, okay? And we still have, I think, 10... 10 more spots if you would like to do a trunk. So I hope to see you guys on Sunday or Wednesday or just any old time because I miss you all. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.